the 60s were a genuine treasure trove of entertainment for kids. Cartoons like Courageous Cat and Minute Mouse, Underdog, and Mighty Mouse fueled young boomers with dreams of superheroes and superheroics. Enter Marvel Comics in 1961 with the debut issue of Fantastic Four No. 1, followed nine months later by a brand new type of superhero, a teenager bitten by a radioactive spider. Who else but the amazing Spider-Man? Buckle up, web slingers. We're about to dive deep into the world of Spider-Man and the 1967 Spider-Man TV series. DC Comics was publishing superhero comics continuously since 1937, with heroes like Superman, Batman, and The Flash. But Marvel Comics introduced a new type of superhero in 1961, a superhero with problems and human frailties. Spider-Man was at the top of that list. He was just a high school kid bitten by a radioactive spider who was suddenly endowed with incredible powers, but still just a kid with no idea of the responsibility that comes with those powers. Originally created as a filler story in the last issue of Amazing Fantasy No. 15, an already canceled comic book, Spider-Man debuted in August of 1962 and struck a chord with young readers who wanted more of the young hero Peter Parker. Due to the strong sales of his first appearance, Spider-Man was given his own book in early 1963. What started out as a bi-monthly publication soon became monthly to satisfy the customer demand. Who exactly created Spider-Man is still a controversial subject, but most agree that Stan Lee first had the idea to create a young, ordinary teenage hero. Lee took the idea to his lead artist, who was comic book creative genius Jack Kirby. Lee asked Kirby to sketch out some character designs and a few scenes for the character's possible debut. Kirby came up with a few character sketches and several story pages, but Lee hated Kirby's direction. He thought the character was just too heroic looking. Lee wanted him to be a weak, anemic teenager to contrast with his becoming a superhero. But instead of calling him Spider-Boy, Lee decided on Spider-Man because he wanted the character to age as the series went on. He added the hyphen to his name because he thought it looked too similar to Superman. Lee then took his idea to artist Steve Ditko, who made the character sickly thin and added web shooters on his wrists, instead of the web gun that Kirby had created. Ditko also came up with the red and blue webbed costume that we're all now familiar with, although he originally wanted to use an orange and purple scheme. When Marvel's publisher Martin Goodman heard the concept of Spider-Man for the first time, he was very skeptical of the idea of a teenage hero. He didn't think they'd be able to sell comics about a character with teen problems like money or romance. Goodman also felt that the audience would be repulsed by the spider theme. Goodman eventually agreed to give Spider-Man a chance though, and the character's debut in Amazing Fantasy No. 15 proved them wrong. The comic was a huge success, and the demand for more Spider-Man stories grew rapidly. By the mid-1960s, Marvel Comics had become a major force in the comic book industry, with Spider-Man as one of its flagship characters. Seeing the potential for expanding their brand, Marvel began exploring the idea of adapting their popular characters to other media, especially television. In 1966, Marvel signed a deal with Grant Trey Lawrence Animation to produce a series of animated TV shows based on their characters, starting with a show called The Marvel Superheroes. The Marvel Superheroes featured five different Marvel characters, including Captain America, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man, Thor, and the Submariner. Each character had their own seven minute segment with stories directly adapted from the comic books. They were produced with extremely limited animation, which basically consisted of taking shots directly from the comic books and animating them across a background. They showcased art by original story artists like Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko. The success of the Marvel superheroes paved the way for Spider-Man to get his own animated series a year later. The 1967 Spider-Man cartoon was put into production by Grant Trey Lawrence Animation, 
the same studio behind the Marvel superheroes. The series was helmed by producer Ray Patterson, with consultants Stan Lee and John Romita Sr., who had taken over as the primary artist on the Amazing Spider-Man comic book after Steve Ditko's departure in 1966. The cartoon premiered on September the 9th, 1967 on ABC and ran for three seasons with a total of 52 episodes. The voice of Spider-Man and Peter Parker was provided by Canadian actor Paul Soles. It was once believed that he was also the voice of Bruce Banner in the Marvel Superheroes, but Banner was actually voiced by Max Ferguson, who also voiced the Hulk. Soul's portrayal of Spider-Man captured the youthful, vulnerable spirit of the character, with a good balance of humor and drama. One of the most memorable aspects of the 1967 Spider-Man cartoon was its catchy theme song, with lyrics written by Academy Award-winning composer Paul Francis Webster and music by Bob Harris. The song became so iconic that it's been used in various Spider-Man adaptations over the years. Producing the show had its challenges, though. The series faced extreme budget constraints, which led to the reuse of footage and animation cells, as well as a lack of detailed backgrounds. To cut costs, the animators often reused backgrounds, character designs, and even entire sequences from previous episodes. Around the time the first season was finished, Grant Trey Lawrence declared bankruptcy and had to close their studio. So in 1968, Krantz Films, who distributed the cartoons, took over production and gave the show over to Ralph Bakshi to handle the animation. Bakshi tried to take a more realistic approach to the animation, but later stated that all Marvel Comics was interested in was just getting their money from ABC. Bakshi loved Spider-Man and was angry at Marvel for not being a little more helpful. He thought the show could have been so much better. There were some inconsistencies and continuity errors, but it gave the show a distinctive look that is still remembered fondly by fans. The showrunners also had to be mindful of the strict broadcast standards of the time, making sure that the content was suitable for all ages. Despite these obstacles, the creative team behind the 1967 Spider-Man TV series managed to deliver a beloved and enduring adaptation of the early Web Slinger's adventures. The show also had its share of controversial or heavily debated episodes. One episode, Revolt in the Fifth Dimension, features surreal and psychedelic imagery that some viewers found disturbing. Because of the budget limitations, Bakshi had characters and backgrounds taken directly from his previous series, Rocket Robin Hood. This episode was so controversial that it was excluded from its initial airing on ABC. It wasn't until the series went into syndication that the episode was seen on the air for the first time. Another debated episode is Phantom from the Depths of Time, in which Spider-Man faces an extraterrestrial threat. This storyline stirred debate among fans due to its departure from the more traditional, Earthbound adventures typically associated with Spider-Man. The series had a lasting impact on Spider-Man's future adaptations in both animation and live-action films. Its success proved that Spider-Man could be successfully translated from comic books to screen, paving the way for numerous cartoons and movies that came after it. The legacy of the 1967 Spider-Man TV series in popular culture is undeniable. The show introduced many people to the character for the first time, securing Spider-Man's place as a household name. The series has become a nostalgic touchstone for fans with its memorable moments, theme song, and visual style. In spite of its limitations, the 1967 Spider-Man cartoon introduced millions of viewers to the character and his colorful world. It ran for three seasons and a total of 52 episodes, featuring many classic villains from the comics, such as Dr. Octopus, the Green Goblin, the Vulture, and the Sandman. The show's popularity contributed to the growing success of Marvel Comics and helped establish Spider-Man as a cultural icon. The 1967 Spider-Man cartoon remains an important milestone in the history of the wall crawler and the superhero genre as a whole. The significance of this groundbreaking series can't be overstated. 
it played a crucial role in shaping the iconic superhero that we all know and love today. What do you guys think? Leave your thoughts and comments below, sharing your favorite memories or moments from the show. And if you like this nostalgic journey into Spider-Man's past, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. But most of all, thanks for watching. This is Rich from Rerun Zone. I'll see you next time. Well, don't just stand there. Go after him. After you, Mr. Jameson.